good morning and welcome to this uh, Flow360 online training webinar. In this session today, we are looking at the whole question of bookings and events uh, and the service requests that are linked to those two things. I'm logged in, uh, as I often am, into our demo as Tim, so I'm wearing my primary manager's hat. And looking at my front screen, I can see three buttons here that I've set up for my main start screen buttons. One that says bookings, one that says lettings, and one that says accommodation. We are going to come back to the differences between those three uh, in a little bit. Uh, but first of all, I wanted just to take you through the process of setting something up as bookable. So in essence, anything in Flow360 can be made bookable, i.e. you can make an object in a room a, a bookable object in the same way as you can make a room or a location bookable. And of course, you can also do the same for vehicles. The only proviso is that if you make a room bookable, it's assumed that all of the objects in the room go along with the booking, and therefore you can't separately create a bookable option for something that is contained within a room that is itself bookable. But let's see how we set those things up. Uh, I'm going to jump straight to a particular room location. And first of all, we're going to have a look at one where there are already some booking options set up. So G11 Room 5, uh, this is on the ground floor of main building of the main school of King's College. And immediately you see this uh, tick on the room record that confirms that this location uh, is a bookable location. To get at the details of what the bookable options are, we need to first of all click on the details tab. And then there's a sub tab which is labeled booking options. So we click on that uh, and we can see currently we have two rows of options set up. We have one that covers Monday through Friday, so the weekdays, and we have a separate set of options covering the weekend period. And you can see that we've got a start and an end time for each of those. You can see we've also got a charge for each of those periods. So for the weekday bookings, we're charging £50 an hour. For the weekend bookings, we're charging £60 an hour. And the times are different for each. So for the weekdays, it's available from eight until seven in the evening and weekends, slightly more restricted times, only available between the hours of 10 and one. So that's an example of what you can set up. You can see some other things here, maximum number of advanced bookings, maximum advanced bookings period, minimum gap between bookings, and all of these things are settable. We can also specify a minimum period requirement for bookings. Now, in the case of this room, that has not been set, uh, but that's an option that we could also set up. So let's look at how we set up some new options for a room that currently is not set to be bookable. I'm going to jump back to my start screen, and we're going to look for room G14. Uh, this is room nine. Uh, this is not a good start. Let's go again here. Let's go G14. Uh, it's actually G14 room eight. Uh, and uh, I can see that one is already bookable. Let's go to G15 room nine. And G15 room nine, we can see, is not currently bookable at all. So let's set up some booking options. We'll go to the details tab and we'll go to the booking options tab. And we can see we have no options set up here. And in order to set up some new options, as usual, when we're looking at a tab list, we want to add a new thing to the list. There's the little plus button here to add a new booking option. And if I hover over that, I get a little tooltip that confirms that that's what I'm about to do. So I'll click on that button and I get this dialog. Enter details of new booking options. By default, it sets the start date to the current date, logically. It also, by default, makes it a 24-7 bookable. 
So if that's what you want to do, all you have to do at this point is hit confirm and you've set up booking options for that object or location. You don't actually have to change anything in the, in the dialogue if you simply want to make something bookable 24 hours a day, seven days a week uh, for no particular charge out. But let's set out something a little bit more complicated than that. So first of all, let's take off the all days option and we'll specify Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So we'll specify weekdays uh, and we'll also take off the 24 hour option and say this is only bookable from eight in the morning until six in the evening. We're going to charge by the hour. Um, now, of course, the options we have here by the minute, by the day, by the week, by the month, by the year, we can set up uh, chargeable periods. Um, and let's specify that we're going to charge 50 pounds an hour for this particular room. And we are going to specify as well that the minimum bookable period is for one hour. So we're not going to accept bookings for less than that. And I'll click confirm. And that sets up now those particular booking options. Now, if we wanted to set up some options for the weekend as well, then, of course, we could do that. We could go back in and again, take off the all days and say Saturday and Sunday. And let's say again, we say from uh, maybe 10 till 2, slightly higher rate because it's a weekend. And again, the minimum period is one hour. And we'll confirm that. Uh, when you when you add bookable options, uh, it won't let you add options that clash with each other. Uh, so you'll notice here that I've set a start date for the current date, uh, but I've, I've set no end date. So one of the options I have here is that when I have this dialog up, I can say, well, this particular set of options applies from this start date to a specific end date. So I could set up booking options that run, say, from January to March and a separate set of options that run from April onwards uh, and so on. You get the idea. So the only stipulation is that you cannot set up booking options that clash with each other. I won't do that now because we've got two options set up. There are those other settings here that I also want to look at adjusting for this particular room location. So first of all, the maximum number of advanced bookings and then the maximum advanced bookings period. That is, how far in advance am I allowed to make a booking uh, for this particular location? And then I also want to specify the minimum gap between bookings because uh, it's entirely possible, in fact, likely that if you're booking out locations or objects that there might be some time or where you need to either set up or or take down and clean the room uh, or or the object before it's booked out again. So all of those things can be set, and let's just do those now. So there's just one simple dialogue that allows you to set those three additional options. So we'll say maximum number of advanced bookings. This is the maximum number that can be made in advance by one person at one time. So we'll say, um, well, actually, let's say maximum of six. Uh, and then the maximum advance bookings period. Well, let's say we don't want uh, to book more than, say, um, a year ahead. So let's say 52 weeks. Minimum period between bookings, then let's put that hour gap in so that uh, it's not going to be possible for someone to book the room from uh, eight o'clock in the morning till 10 for a meeting and then somebody else to book it from 10.30, say they need to wait until 11 o'clock uh, before you can put another booking in for that location. So let's just set those three things up and we can see there now that those are set. So that specifies all of the booking options for this individual room. You need to set up the booking options for each location, each object that is bookable. And, and of course, that can be the options can be different for each of those things. Uh, and you can specify the, the time periods and the charge out rates and all of those things separately on a location by location basis. OK, so having set up uh, those booking options, we can see now that the bookable tick is now set on this particular room record. Let's make a booking. I'm going to go to the bookings tab. Uh, of course, there aren't any because we've only just set up the booking options for this location. So if I want to book this particular room, 
then I can simply go to the room. I can jump to the room location from the start screen. I can go to the bookings tab. If there are any current active bookings, they would be listed. So I could quickly check the list to see if I'm not about to try and book something that's going to clash. Um, there's also a calendar we can pop up that shows where the bookings are. Um, and I'm going to click the little plus button to add a new booking for this room location. And this takes me through to uh, the standard help desk form, but this is the form that is set up for the booking service. So this differs somewhat from standard fault report uh, or other service requests. You can see in this section, uh, the blue, sort of purpley section here, that uh, it's pre-specified all the way down to G15 room 9 because that's where we were. We said we wanted to book that location. So it's already pre-specified that. All we need to do is say dates and times. When do we want this? So let's say we have a meeting on Monday uh, from uh, 11 o'clock uh, for an hour, let's say 11 till 12. Um, we'll click the little find button. We just need to confirm availability. So having specified the start and end dates and times, we then need to confirm the availability. At that point, it's going to check those booking options for this particular location and make sure that, A, you've allowed enough advance notification before making the booking, uh, and B, that, of course, there isn't already a booking in place for that location. Now, the fact that it has given us a tick in this section uh, confirms that uh, G15 Room 9 is available. It's also listed down here as an available resource. So uh, we know that that's an option. So I can simply put in here now, uh, team meeting, uh, and click the confirm button. And that's it. That would be the entire process. And let's just see what happens to that. So we hit the confirm button, of course, Normally, I could hit just confirm and log out, and that would take me off the system. But we want to follow the process through a little bit more carefully. So this is the booking service request that I have now made. So what happens to booking services requests is that they go typically to either a bookings manager, or in this case, we can see it's been allocated to a bookings team. So this comes back to our team setups. You can, of course, set up a team of individuals that could be one or more people on a bookings team and specify that that is the team that deals with booking service requests. You can have a separate team that's set up for vehicle bookings if you want to. So the bookings team has now received this request. We can see on the service request here that it is a booking. And if we click the little button, we can actually go to the booking request record itself. So this is currently on hold. It's pending and it's waiting for a member of the bookings team to confirm that this request is actually OK. Uh, so typically, someone will want to just check that through and make sure that what you're asking for can be provided. Uh, and they will then say OK to that. So assuming that uh, someone from the bookings team has done that, they would then click on the uh, change status button, hold release and say it's OK uh, and click confirm. And that is now a confirmed booking. So that is now in the calendar. It's in the diary as a booking for room nine, G15 room nine. And if we click on the booked resources tab for this booking, we can see that one single room listed. If we look at the services tab, the only service there is the booking service, of course, the, the request that's gone to the booking service. Um, the events uh, are listing, first of all, that uh, the booking was made and then the hold was applied because it was waiting for approval. And then the hold was released and booking is now confirmed uh, as a separate event. And on the messages tab, of course, as usual, we see the messages that have gone backwards and forwards automatically in the background in relation to, first of all, making the request and then confirming that it's OK. Uh, if we go back to the booked resources tab and click the little button to go through to room nine, of course, on the bookings tab, we can now see that as a live booking. Uh, if we click on the little calendar icon, we can pop up the calendar um, and we can see that that booking is in place. Um, so that's all done. Uh, so in terms of doing uh, creating a, a simple booking 
and a booking for a locational object where you know that's the locational object you want to book, then the fastest thing is go to the record for that object or location first, go to the bookings tab, click the button uh, to put in a new booking request for that object. Now, of course, uh, I might simply be coming into the system and saying, well, uh, I, I want a location. Uh, I need a location for a meeting, but I'm not particularly fussed uh, which location that is. Let's come out as Tim, the manager, and let's just come back in as a member of staff wanting to find a location for a booking. Again, maybe for a meeting, um, and they just need a room that's available. So I'm going to log in as Anne Jeffries. She's a member of the boarding house staff, and she wants uh, a location for a team meeting. So I'm going to click on the new issue request button from my front screen. Um, and rather than logging a fault report, I'm going to go to the booking service request because I need to find a booking location, a bookable location. Um, and that switches the form around. Now, it's entirely possible if we just come back to the beginning, of course, if I'm logged in as Anne, that by default, I might be using the step through form. Uh, in which case I would perhaps specify a location first and then step through and then say it's a booking service. As soon as I select booking service, it, it is going to switch me through to the full form because the booking service request requires access to more information at once uh, and isn't handled very well through the step through process. So you can see here, because I'm logged in as Anne, that it has preset the location to Tucker's house. So if I start looking now for locations for a meeting, say for next Tuesday from 11 o'clock, um, it's going to restrict the search to bookable locations within Tucker's house. And if I click on there, it just tells me the only location, there is a location that's available, but the only location that is available is Office One. If I want to extend that search to include other possible locations, then I can clear this preset location. As you see here at the top, it says restrict to location. If I clear that back and say, just search the entire college site. And if I click the find available locations button again, then I get, of course, a much more extensive list, which includes Tucker's House Office One, because we saw already that was available. But of course, we've got a lot of other things uh, that are available here. So G14 Room 8, for example. But let's assume that actually Office One in Tucker's house is fine. So what I need to do at this point is just confirm what location I want to book by clicking the little target button next to the relevant location. So I'll click the target button there. That puts Office One into the, uh, the blue section here. Uh, and I can see now that I've got a tick in that section. So that's all done. And now all I again, all I need to do is say, what do I need this for? So again, team meeting is fine. And then at that point, I could click confirm and it would be exactly the same process as, as we just saw with booking from a single room location where we started from the room itself. But I want just, just to add something to this particular booking because I want some coffees uh, available for the people who are attending the meeting. And in order to do that, I'm going to just click on the catering tab um, and I'm going to go to the drinks service option. And I'm going to say, well, we want four coffees and we want two teas. Uh, so that's confirmed on my drinks options for this meeting. That's confirmed that's what I'm asking for. Um, and I will now click the confirm button to put in the request. So again, this goes in as a request, uh, first of all, to the bookings team. Uh, and secondly, it puts in a request to catering to supply some catering. Um, I have to apologize at this point because we've got a very odd uh, figure coming here for the catering service where we've got a, a preset cost that somebody has put in. Ignore that. Um, what we would have here is coffee, £2.50 each, teas at £2.30 each. So it does give you a costing for the uh, service requirements if those things have been costed. Um, and let's go through to the booking record itself and just see what's happened here. 
So again, on the bookings, bookings request record, we get a summary here of all of the things that have been requested. And if I go to the services tab, I can see we've got the booking service request and separately we've got a catering service request. So when you make a booking and you ask for additional services as part of that event is effectively what we're looking at. Uh, then it creates separate service requests for each of the service areas that you've specified. So in this case, the booking service gets a request to actually book the room location and catering gets uh, a request to supply the catering for that meeting. Uh, so let's come out of this as Anne because I've put my request in and let's come back in as, um, as the bookings manager. Let's come, let's come in that way, first of all. So I'm going to come in as uh, Janet Williams, first of all. Um, Janet will see that she's got some messages to reply to, and the most recent is that booking service request. So if we have a look at that, it takes me straight through uh, to that particular message linked to the request. If we go to the request, uh, then we can see all of the detail there, and let's go through to the the main booking management record, which lists all of the linked services and their separate requests as well. Now, at the moment, the catering service is still waiting for approval. How do we know that? If we have a look at the status here, we can see that it is that it's got a queue against it. This is a query, a request, um, and we can see it's also got this triangular uh, pink slash across it, which confirms also that this is on hold. Uh, until the catering manager or the catering team confirm that they can supply that service on that date and time for that meeting. So if as the bookings manager, I try and confirm the booking at this stage, it's going to tell me I can't uh, because we're still waiting on service managers to confirm uh, that they can supply the relevant service. So I need to wait now. I can drill through to the catering service and I can just see who's dealing with that. And I can see the catering team are dealing with that. Uh, but so far, they haven't confirmed that it's OK. So let's come out of that. And we're going to go through a process quickly of just logging in as a manager who can confirm the catering request. Uh, let's go to the, the issues list. And we'll look at that uh, booking service. And we'll go through to the booking record itself. And then on the services tab, we can see the catering service request. So on my main list, if I look at the catering service request, if I'm logged in as a manager or someone who can confirm this request, I've got a cancel and a confirm button at the top here. So if I click on the confirm button, I don't need to type any text unless I want to. I'm simply saying, yes, we can do that. Uh, so I hit confirm. And it just gives me a little message to say your response has been logged. And it also then says, please note, this request will remain on hold until the entire booking is confirmed. So we've confirmed that the catering is OK. And if we have a look here at the status, again, we can see it's all still on hold because we're now waiting for the booking service to confirm the booking as a whole. Uh, but the catering has now been confirmed and is now waiting on that final uh, step in order to confirm the whole thing. So in order to confirm the whole thing, I need to come back in again as a member of the bookings team. So let's just do that quickly. I'll come back in as Janet Williams. And I'm going to go to, again, my issues list. I'm going to go to that most recent request, go through to the booking record itself. And now on the services tab, I can see the catering service, the underlying color is green for confirmed. Uh, I can see it's still on hold, of course. If I click now on the change status button, I can see hold release is fine. So I can just say we're OK to proceed on that. Um, and I can click the confirm button. And that all goes to confirmed and green. And we can see the catering service hold has been released at the same time. Uh, if we have a look at the messages, of course, the messages that flow backwards and forwards in relation to the booking, again, just confirmed 
uh, that the hold has been released and a couple of messages that have gone backwards and forwards in relation to the service requests linked to that individual booking. So that was a slightly more complicated process. That was a process that, uh, first of all, uh, I logged in as a member of staff and I said, well, I need a room location for a team meeting. And I put in the dates and times and asked Flow360 to find me the locations that were available, which it did. Uh, and then I clicked the target button to select the location that I wanted. Uh, and then the additional bit that we added for this second request was that we added in that catering requirement. Uh, let's have a look. If I come back in as uh, one of the primary managers, for instance, let's just have a look at putting together something that is um, more complex than that. Uh, so again, let's go to new issue request, uh, and I'm going to go here to booking service in order to get me through to the bookings request form. There's another option I could use here. So if I'm going back to the start screen and I've got bookings as uh, a main button, as a manager, I can click on that and I've got my list of current bookings and I've got a new button at the top. So I can make a new booking request directly from the bookings list. And, and of course, that loads up the booking service uh, request form straight away. Um, I can see again, my, my restriction here at the moment is that I'm going to be searching within main building only. But uh, for my purposes today, that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to specify a date and time, we're going to be looking for next Wednesday. And let's say we're, you know, we're looking for something that's a whole day event so it starts at nine o'clock and it's eight hours um so it's going to go through till five let's just see what's available we've got a number of options uh, actually let's take the main hall because this is an event that a number of people are coming to and the main hall would be a good option so we'll select main hall as our preferred location and then we have a number of other things we need to put in place. I need some IT support for this particular thing. We need a data projector and screen set up, and we need a, a sound system. Uh, so we need to be able to make sure people can hear. And of course, we need the data projector because we're going to be putting a presentation up. And then in terms of general or portering requests, we need some car parking spaces reserved because we've got three people arriving uh, off site and, and we need some car parking. Um, and we'll need some tables set up. We need half a dozen tables. Um, and then for catering requirements, we're going to have coffee and biscuits for 12. Uh, and then we're also going to have some lunch requirements. So we need uh, some eight. And we're going to set up some main options and vegetarian options. We might have wine for uh, a number of people and mineral waters and so on. So we can specify, we can build up our, our list of options there for catering requirements for both coffee and biscuits and for lunches. Um, and uh, then we've got IT support and we've got the general service requests as well. There are some other things we could set up under booking options as well. So all of these things you can specify under your standard tasks, uh, those pick list options for the different service areas. Um, so this is going to be an area meeting um, and it's going to run all day and we're in the main hall and we'll click confirm to put that request in. So this is slightly more um, uh, comprehensive here. We, we've got an area meeting uh, in the main hall. We've got the date requirements here and then we've also got outlined here the catering service requirements with all of the line items separately specified and the total costs of catering, general service requests, the IT support requests. That's all linked together on the main help desk record. And of course, from there, we can drill through to the bookings management record itself, where the separate service requests are all listed independently. And we can see the booking service, we can see IT support request, the general service request that was for the car parking and some tables being set up in the in the hall and of course the catering service requests as well and if we drill through to any one of those then of course we can just see the detail of that specific service request and for each of those service area managers what they will see on their request is the tick against the booking 
tick box here on the service request, which confirms that this is part of a bigger event. And each service manager can then go through and see who else is involved, uh, what else is involved in, in putting this event together. And we can look at the details, the sort of summary of everything that's going on. We can check the booked resources. We can check the other services. We can check which of those services have confirmed or denied, uh, because of course that will be the other option that actually uh, that particular service request cannot be provided on the date and time uh, that's been asked for. But what this means is that each of those service area managers can see very clearly what's going on with all of the other services that are involved in ensuring that this event can happen. And everybody can review the messaging and see what's going on. Uh, now, on the details tab, uh, where we can see all of this information, uh, we do actually have an edit button. And the edit button allows us to make changes. Uh, and we can make changes to the existing service requirements, uh, or we can even add in new service requirements if we want to. So even after we've put an event together and we've gone through the process of confirming that all of the services can be provided and the booking as a whole, the event as a whole, has been confirmed, we can still, at a later point, come back into that particular event and make some changes to it if we want to. So we can edit. Uh, the existing service requirements, so I can go back into my catering requests, click the edit button, and make some changes to what I've got here. Maybe it's actually not 12 people uh, who need coffee and biscuits, maybe it's only 10. Uh, so I can make that change request here, and we can now see on the summary that that's been updated, and we've got 10 coffee and biscuits rather than 12, which is what we had previously. Um, and we will have triggered a message that's going to go back to the service area manager, which says change of service requirement. Uh, and that details the fact that we've moved from 12 coffees back down to 10 coffees. And we can do that for each of the services separately, independently, if we want to. We can do that from each of the service request records as, as well. Um, the other thing we could change if we wanted to is the dates and times. Uh, and of course, trying, you know, attempting to make those changes from here will also go back and make sure that by making a requested change, we are not conflicting with the booking options that have been set up for that particular location. So let's just review what we've done there. Uh, we, we went back to the main booking options, the booking services request. Um, actually, from the bookings list, we clicked the new button. Uh, we went through the process here of finding a location for a date and time, and then we added some catering requirements. We added some IT support requirements. We added some general portering requirements. And we put all of that together to build this event, and then we confirmed that. And all of those service requests went off to the different service areas, with everybody being uh, fully informed that they are part of a larger event uh, that involves other service areas in addition to their own one. I just wanted to point you briefly at this option here that says recurring. So we could do something like, I want a room for that hour from midday um, on the 25th but I also want it for the next three weeks following that. So I want this one plus another three. Um, so let's say we repeat every week and let's just now we'll click and just see what's available within main building starting on the 25th of May and then for three weeks following that. And you can see we've got some room options available. So that's fine. We could make a booking here that is then going to specify. Let's just do something quickly. Uh, let's just put in an, a catering request for that as well. Um, and we'll call this meeting series. Um, and I need to confirm my room location. So what is it we're selecting here? We'll take room five because we don't need a, a big location for this. And we'll put that through just so that you can see what that looks like. So the difference here is 
that rather than just a single date and time in this part of the form, what we've requested is four separate dates and times for the four separate meetings. And if I click the button to go through to the booking management record itself, we can see all of those dates. And if I look at the services tab, uh, we can see the catering service request uh, for this date, first of all. But if I look at the dates tab, I can see the four separate dates have been set up for this series of meetings. And each date request has a separate set of service requirements. So this is booking reference 419-2A. So if we look at the dates option, we have one, two, three, four, we have four separate dates that we've requested and they are uh, they are numbered, they're referenced sequentially. So we get 419-1A for the first date, 419-2A for the second date, 4193A and 4194A for the third and fourth dates. And if we go back and look at making some changes to the service requirements, we will then get some additional options. So first of all, when I hit the edit button, it says this is one of a series of dates. Do you want to update the requirements just for this single instance, i.e. for the second date in the series, because the record that we're looking at up here is 4192A, so this is the second date in the series. You can change just the service requirements for that one date, or I can change it for that one date plus all future dates in the series. So if I want to change it for all of them from day one on, then I need to start on the record for day one and click that. And then I can say I want to change the requirements for all dates and it will allow me to make changes that will be reflected across all four dates in the series. But supposing I just wanted to make a change to the requirements for the third and fourth instances of this series, then I'd start on the record for the third instance and click the edit button. And again, remember that the, the stipulation here is what it's asking is, do I want to change for this one single date or do I want to change for this date plus all future dates? So it's all dates following this one. Um, so if I select all at this point, it will allow me to make a change for dates three and four. So let's just go in and do edit, edit catering service and change the coffee and biscuits from six to eight uh, for dates three and four. So if I go back now and we look at the dates and I go to uh, the, uh, the details for uh, the third uh, date in the series, we can see coffee and biscuits eight in number. If I go back to the first date, we can see coffee and service, I must have changed them for all of them. We've also got eight. Uh, in in the, for the first date as well. But you get the idea. When we're making the changes on the edit button, we can change for a single date, we can change for multiple dates, and it will allow us to, to step through and do that. And we can also add in additional services if we want to. One last thing I want to look at today, and it's really just very brief. I said at the beginning that we would look at what the difference is between a booking, a letting, and, a, and an accommodation. And the basic differences are that a booking is generally a short-term thing, so it's a room booking for an hour or so, or an object. Lettings and accommodation are longer term, so they tend to be a week or more, uh, and typically it might be letting part of the site, uh, maybe the sports facilities to an outside organisation, um, or uh, in the case of accommodation, letting out residential accommodation to staff. And if we have a look at those two options quickly, if we click on the lettings list, I can see I've got one letting listed here, which is where the sports fields are, are leased out to an outside agency. Um, and you can see for, uh, for lettings and accommodation, we have an additional set of information that comes into play here that covers things like lease terms, uh, break dates, review dates, uh, and so on. So a, a more sort of complex set of uh, data 
uh, that relates to leases or longer term accommodation uh, that would be appropriate for lettings or staff accommodation. If I go back to the front screen and we look at the accommodations list, um, I can see again, uh, lease number 4101A again has all of these additional options on there that allow me to set up uh, facilities or, or set up the uh, specifications for this particular lease in relation to using 35 Kings Close as residential accommodation for a member of staff. Uh, so that's the only difference really. Um, they all go through the same process in terms of putting in a request. Uh, it's just that lettings and accommodation, these longer term uh, lease arrangements allow us to specify additional information that is relevant to leases, um, is not relevant to short term bookings and events. Well, we've covered quite a lot of ground uh, today. We've gone uh, over time a little bit, but I hope that's OK with everybody. As ever, uh, go back to the user guide and look for particular things in the user guide. So if we want to find uh, you know, information in the user guide about uh, accommodation, then I can type accommodation into the quick find. And the first hit I get is staff accommodation creating a new booking slash lease. Um, and that, of course, takes me through the process of how do I set up um, a new staff accommodation uh, setting within Flow360. So the help desk is there. Of course, the, the user guide is there. Uh, do contact us, uh, support at flow360.net uh, if you have specific requests and questions. Uh, and we will get back to you.